In the Labour leadership campaign, Keir Starmer promised unity, authority and integrity. As 2020 draws to a close, I want to look back at Keir Starmer's first year as Labour leader and to see if he has delivered on his promises. Has it been a success, a failure or somewhat in the middle? Let's break down how he's performed and go through the big stories of his leadership. On screen now you can see the 10 policy pledges of Keir Starmer's leadership campaign. Economic, social and climate justice, which are three different pledges. Promote peace and human rights. Common ownership. Defend migrants' rights. Strengthen workers' rights and trade unions. Radical devolution of power, wealth and opportunity. Equality and effective opposition to the Tories. I'm not going to go through each individual pledge, but generally these policies are either inspired or directly taken from Corbyn. Members were essentially promised Corbynite policies, especially on the economy, but with a much more polished and uh, professional competent face. It didn't take him long to abandon some of these policies, uh, increasing taxes for the top 5% of earners, public ownership of utilities, and his clear disregard for human rights when he failed to post two integral foreign policy bills, which I will get into later. What's confusing for me is that Corbyn's policies were popular. They tend to poll well among the public. So if there's anything about Corbyn's leadership Starmer was going to keep, I would have thought it'd be the popular bits. Uh, maybe he's playing a blinder uh, by not talking about policies. Perhaps he thinks that um, you know he can't be attacked on them, but he very much intends on keeping them. I, I, I obviously don't believe that. In June, Keir Starmer sacked Shadow Education Secretary Rebecca Long-Bailey. Long-Bailey being in Corbyn's shadow cabinet and the left candidate in the leadership contest. The reason was based on an anti-Semitism claim. But it was also clear that it was for factional reasons as other members of the shadow cabinet had also made comments that could have been viewed as anti-Semitic but no action was taken against them. So it shows inconsistency. So this is a clear abandonment of unity and also politically poor judgment since it drew attention of splits and factions. We then had the Black Lives Matter comment which denigrated the movement down to just a simple moment. Take a look for yourself. That's nonsense um, and um, nobody should be um, saying anything about defunding the police. I mean, and I would have no truck with that. I was director of public prosecutions for five years. I worked with police forces across England and Wales, bringing thousands of people to court. So um, my support for the police is very, very strong and evidenced in, in the actions I've, joint actions I've done with the police. There's a broader issue here. The Black Lives Matter movement, uh, or, or moment, if you like, internationally, is about reflecting something completely different and it's reflecting um, on what happened dreadfully in America just a few weeks ago um, and showing or acknowledging uh, that as a moment across the world and it, it, it's it's a shame it's getting tangled up with these organizational issues um, with the organization Black Lives Matter but I, don't, I wouldn't have any truck uh, with what uh, the organization was saying about defunding the police or anything else that's just nonsense. Now of course no one's expecting the leader of a social democratic party to come out in support of defunding the police. That is, that's just crazy. But it was a lack of understanding the hurt felt worldwide that created BLM in the first place. But also, he was praised by Nigel Farage. Our next one brings us to an article written in the Daily Mail by Keir himself. The article was titled, No ifs, no buts, kids should go back to school. It was a clear panel to the moral righteousness of, let's be honest, um, right-leaning male readers. However, there was no caveat which he should have added, which should be on the advice of scientists like, go back to school if it's safe. This also put him at odds with teaching unions and also Rebecca Long Bailey herself because she was formerly shadow education. Reading the article though, you genuinely could believe it was a Tory MP speaking. Um, but not only that, where we are today in terms of COVID, including the big spread in schools, um, it's kind of made him look silly. He, can, he can't attack the government on their incompetence when he you know, refused among many times to oppose them, so it's poor political judgment again. One of the best things, in my opinion, of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership was to move the party toward a funding system that didn't rely on wealthy individuals. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the last couple of years of his leadership, the party was only funded by members and unions. It hasn't taken Keir long. He's already courted some of those wealthy donors back, including one David Abrams, who has made some vile racist tweets, which you can see now. The worst offenders are self-hating Jews. We have too many of them. Self-hating Jews, always the worst types. Don't think I know how to divide political Islam from moderates and fundamentalists. 
it is the very nature of the beast. So we put out a tweet to BBC Question Time. Put onus on Muslim communities, but is the trust there? They surely have mixed loyalties. Some pretty disgusting tweets, and that is the guy that Keir Starmer has personally sent a letter to to come back to the party. The ironic thing is that Corbyn managed to raise huge amounts of funds since people like the idea of a political party represent them, not the 1%. Unite, the biggest union, has actually decreased their funding directly because of Keir Starmer. And at the same time, hasn't been able to replace those funds from the rich. Once again, it's poor political management. I briefly talked about two specific uh, bills earlier in the video. These were the Overseas Operations Bill and the Covert Human Intelligence Sources, uh, commonly known as the Spy Cops Bill. The Overseas Operations Bill effectively legalised torture. And any vote that isn't a no is pretty despicable regardless of political party or, or political leanings. Also in the process, he sacked Nadia Whittam, who's um, Parliament's youngest MP, um, for opposing the bill. That's another lefty off the shadow cabinet. In terms of the Sky Cops bill, um, Starmer made clear that the bill should not be opposed, even if they don't get any amendments. It's absolutely crazy. Now, since these bills were abstained and not directly opposed, the Tories have managed to attack them for not standing up for troops. So Labour didn't gain any political capital. They were just seen as supporting the government on defunct legislate morally defunct legislation from people who support Labour and then being unpatriotic for people who, who you know who are right wing who vote the Conservatives. Um, that's not an effective opposition. Probably the biggest controversial decision of Keir Starmer's leadership was to suspend Jeremy Corbyn from the party and then obviously when he was re-admitted he removed the whip. Not only was this um, you know a disgraceful decision, all Keir Starmer once again has drawn attention from the media to factionalism and anti-semitism, two things he desperately wanted the media not to talk about. When infight happens it takes the spotlight away from the government so once again it shows that Labour are um, an ineffective opposition and it also undermined one of Starmer's supposedly characteristics of being authoritative when there's ongoing members and CLPs revolting of the treatment of Jeremy Corbyn. Now when I started this channel I made two videos of this so go and check it out because it covers it much more you know, in depth. Finally the last controversial thing from Keir Starmer was the lack of pushback when somebody called up LBC when he was a guest on the show with white supremacist talking points. Keir Starmer is the leader of the Labour Party, the official opposition, and someone called up talking about conspiracy theories, neo-Nazi conspiracy theories, and there was absolutely no pushback. It's um, astonishing. Again, I've made a video on this, so please check it out. I've put a link in the video. So after all of these controversies, has it been worth it? Labour are either neck and neck or behind in the polls. Starmer's approval rating's taken a hit, um, especially among people of colour. I think this shows to me an utterly disastrous first year for Keir Starmer. The party is losing money, it's losing members, uh, civil war is happening and he has no clear idea where he wants the party to go, he's got no policies. He is shown to be completely incompetent which is surprising for a, f uh, a former human rights lawyer. He's made awful moral uh, judgments and he has shown no indication that Labour can take power. So if we were to compare his performance against his what, what he promised in the leadership campaign, which is unity, integrity, authority, he fails, he falls short. So unity, he sacks two left MPs from the shadow cabinet, he suspended Jeremy Corbyn, the party is more divided than ever. Integrity, he failed to oppose pretty disgraceful legislation and hasn't gained any political capital in return. And then on authority, this is the biggest revolt among members and CLPs I've ever seen. So no more really needs to be said on that. This is quite a long video, but there was a lot to cover, understandably. This will be my last video for Christmas. 2021 will be a big year and I've got a lot planned. I'll be expanding from just political commentary. So expect to see Vox Pops, Myth Debunking and more. I hope you guys have an amazing Christmas. Please stay safe and remember, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the new year.